Okay, you guys seriously can't even wait two seconds for me to come back from my vacation before there's some news for Marvel Spider-Man 2, huh? So I'm boarding the plane coming back from Disney World, and don't get me wrong, incredible vacation, the Guardians of the Galaxy ride at Epcot, one of the greatest roller coasters I've ever been on in my life, Tron, also an absolute blast, and Galaxy's Edge is just a dream come true for any Star Wars fan, and yet, as I'm boarding this plane, thinking that I'm gonna be able to come home and rest a little bit, I see that there's a prequel comic coming out for Marvel Spider-Man 2, and we got some potential story details from it. So I guess it's right back to work and I hope you guys are looking forward to Marvel Spider-Man 2 because I am feeling it. That PlayStation Showcase, it is right around the corner and we're going to be getting some gameplay for Spider-Man 2. Mark my words. And if that gets you hyped, I know it gets you hyped. You're going to have to scroll down. You're definitely going to have to hit that thumbs up button. And hey, okay, listen, there's a big problem right now with the channel. There's 60% of you that are currently not subscribed. So if you're not going to subscribe after this video, me and you are going to have a huge issue. All right. With that being said, let's jump into this. So apparently an eBay listing is what started all this, as it may have leaked that a prequel comic for Marvel Spider-Man 2 was coming, and well, today it was officially announced by Marvel. And funnily enough, this is to celebrate free comic book day, so I believe people can go out there right now and get it for free. And I think starting May 6th, it's gonna be available digitally for people that are not in the US, like me. Kinda wish that I could have a physical version of this comic, but it's okay. The cover art for this prequel comic is awesome. It is just so cool seeing people Peter and Miles swinging together, and we also get a brand new look at both of their new suits in the game. Miles' suit, not much of a difference there, just a longer red stripe down the arm, it seems. But of course, Peter got quite the upgrade in terms of the way that the white logo looks on the chest, and the blue is a bit brighter as well here, too. There's seemingly only one image in existence for Marvel Spider-Man 2 that gives us a look at both of these suits in game, but again, they do look fantastic, and I can't wait to see more of them hopefully in the next couple of weeks. We also even got a preview of this comic and you can see some of the panels on screen, Peter and Miles interacting with one another, talking about the past events where they had to deal with stuff like the Tinkerer. But most importantly, Marvel had a press release when they released this image of the prequel comic and this little preview that you just saw. And in that press release is the synopsis for the actual prequel comic, which is definitely gonna give us some information about what's going on with the overall story and these characters in Marvel's Spider-Man 2. So it mentions here over on the Marvel website for this Spider-Man 2 prequel comic, when the story opens, MJ and Peter are back from Simcaria, you may remember from the events of Spider-Man Miles Morales. And MJ has just finished her book, Perilous, a journey into war-torn Simcaria. But unfortunately, sales aren't going well, and she's been forced to go on J. Jonah Jameson's Just The Facts podcast to try and drum up support for her book. As their ideologies clash and the interview starts to go south, the Spider-Man literally crash the interview while fighting the Tarantula, a familiar face from Spider-Geddon number zero. Miles and Peter wrap up the Tarantula, which also wraps up MJ's disastrous interview. So there you go, we got some bits and pieces that connect the thread between Spider-Man Miles Morales leading into now Spider-Man 2. Like I said, you may remember that in Miles Morales, the the reason why Miles is New York's only Spider-Man for that game is because Peter went off on that trip to Simcaria with MJ. And well, I guess things haven't been working out too well for MJ as she's been trying to sell this book that she worked on on that trip. But the synopsis also mentions here, as the story continues, we see several worlds colliding in the lives of Miles, Peter, and MJ. Miles, a student of Brooklyn Visions Academy, sees all of his friends solidifying their plans for college, but he's feeling left out. He's been so focused on other things, he hasn't had the time to think about the future. There are plenty of directions he could go, but trying to pick the right one is overwhelming and paralyzing. And I actually think that's really interesting for Miles. This just goes back to the whole point of Spider-Man in the fact that when Spider-Man wins, Peter, or in this case, Miles loses. And when Miles wins, Spider-Man loses. The responsibility of leading this double life is way too difficult, and unfortunately, they have to lose sometimes. And in more cases than not, it ends up being their regular life, I guess you could say, that suffers the most. And then you also wonder how this is gonna continue to the actual story of the game. Is Miles going to be struggling with this and wondering what he's gonna do next and what's right for him? But now things get a little bit hype in a bit of a downer paragraph <laughs> about what's going on with Peter. Let me just read it out for you and explain. Meanwhile, Peter is back in Queens, living in the house he grew up in, but he's drowning in bills. May had mortgaged the house to keep Feast running during the events of Marvel Spider-Man, and now Peter is left with the responsibility of finding a new job in order to make payments. MJ would make a perfect housemate to help with the mortgage, but she needs to stay in the city for her job as an associate editor at the Daily Bugle. At least that's what she tells Peter. There's an unspoken tension between them as both struggle to take the next step in their relationship. 
relationship. Now, I'll be honest, I feel like we've already gone over this whole, you know, MJ and Peter broke up. They had quite a strain in their relationship. They didn't really like each other in Marvel Spider-Man, and then they began to know why they loved each other in the first place. So I kind of hope that we don't go over this whole there's problems with them once again, and they're fighting once again. I hope that they're just working together and they're a good team. But of course, the big key word in that paragraph I just read to you is Queens. Peter is staying at the home that he grew up in, trying to take over the responsibilities that were left behind in the passing of May. And so, considering he's living at home now, he may be doing a lot of operation in Queens. And so you gotta wonder if that's gonna be one of the new sections of New York City that we'll be able to explore in Marvel Spider-Man 2. And once again, like I said earlier in regards to Miles, when Spider-Man wins, Peter loses. He is struggling, he's not doing well right now, and we're gonna have to see how that's gonna carry over into the game. But now, the meat and the bones of this prequel comic from Marvel Spider-Man 2, the antagonist, the people that Spider-Man and Miles Morales' Spider-Man are going to be facing up against. It mentions here on Marvel.com. On top of all that, there's a new gang in town, and they appear to be using magic? Our heroes work together to track down and confront members of this gang using their superpowers to uncover the gang's leader, the Hood. This new supervillain appears to have supernatural abilities that defy mere webs and fists. While Miles, Peter, and MJ attempt to balance their responsibilities to the city and each other, they keep coming back to one of the main themes of this action-packed issue, is magic real? Kind of a weird question to be asking in Marvel's New York City. I mean, the Avengers already exist, which I assume Thor would be one of them, and we have the Sanctum Sanctorum as well. Come on, Spider-Man. Yes, in, in Marvel, it's real. But hey, they're questioning it. They don't know what's real or not. And what's a character? What's a villain that absolutely does that for these characters as well? Mysterio. I'd say the hood being a part of the prequel comic could be interesting to see how that could lead into the main game. But my best guess here is the hood is going to be the one they're just going to face off against in this prequel comic. And we're not really going to see any of that transition into the game. But who knows? I could totally be wrong about that. And I wouldn't really mind if I am. What I do know though, is that with the announcement of this prequel comic came a PlayStation blog and they mentioned in the PlayStation blog to thank us for hanging in there. And they know that we've been hungry for some Marvel Spider-Man 2 news. Speaking of that PlayStation blog though they had one more little bit of news to announce which i think will be pretty exciting for some of the people out there that have been requesting this the remastered playstation 5 version of marvel spider-man is finally going to be sold separately up until at some point later this month you can only get the remastered version of marvel spider-man as part of the ultimate edition for marvel spider-man miles morales which honestly you should just do that but to each their own playstation blog here says later this month marvel spider-man remastered will become available for a standalone purchase on the playstation store this title was previously only included as part of the Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales Ultimate Edition. On top of that, when the game becomes available, there will be an upgrade program for owners of the original Marvel Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4 console. Whether you have the disc or digital copy of the PS4 game, you will be able to upgrade to Marvel Spider-Man Remastered on the PS5 console for $10. Owners of Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales can still obtain Marvel Spider-Man Remastered by upgrading to the Ultimate Edition through the main menu of the PS5 version of Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. That was a freaking mouthful. Finally though, the PlayStation blog re assures for those who don't fall into either of those categories marvel spider-man remastered can be purchased on the playstation store for 49.99 we hope you'll take a chance to revisit the original marvel spider-man in the form of marvel spider-man remastered ahead of marvel spider-man 2's release this fall there it is once again for anybody who's still worried this game is going to be delayed we have reassurance for maybe the 500th or maybe the 10,000th time it's coming out in the fall guys fall guys no the fall comma guys like you guys not fall guys the game the good game though i think it's it's coming guys it's any day now that playstation is going to drop that tweet and say hey playstation showcase on this day and holy smokes what a day that is going to be because we might see stuff for spider-man 2 we might see something for mortal kombat 12 even we might see something for marvel's wolverine it might end up being one of the biggest showcases in games that we have seen in a very, very long time. And with that being said, now I wanna kick it to you guys. Sound off with your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think about the prequel comic for Marvel's Spider-Man 2? And also, do you think that that PlayStation showcase is around the corner like I do? Sound off with all your thoughts in the comments. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hit that thumbs up button if you did. I've been Caboose, and I'll see you guys later.